this video we're going to be taking a look at a reaction mechanism. So we're given this overall reaction. We're told that the experimental rate law was determined to be second order in NO2 and zeroth order in CO. And we're told that the reaction has an enthalpy of negative 226 kilojoules per mole. Finally, we're given this as the proposed mechanism for the reaction. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to answer uh, each of these questions and we're going to do it over the next couple slides. All right, the first question we're asked is, when I add up the steps, the elementary steps of the reaction mechanism, do they in fact give the overall reaction? And so what we're going to do is look for intermediates. So anything that appears on both the product side and on the reactant side. Uh, and so it looks to me like I've got two O2s on the product side and then one, two O2s on the reactant side. So those guys will cancel out. And it also looks like I have an N2 on the products and an N2 on the reactants. Uh, I don't see anything else that cancels out. And so now anything and everything that is on the reactant side is in the reactants of the new reaction and everything that's on the product side is going to be in the products of the new reaction. So when I add these guys up, I have two NO2 plus two CO goes to two NO plus two CO2. All right, and you can see that uh, I have a coefficient of two in front of each one of the reactants and products, so I can simplify that if I want to, and so I can just write And so indeed, when I add up the elementary steps from my reaction mechanism, I do in fact get the correct overall reaction. Uh, and then we've already done this, but the problem was is to identify inter in intermediates. And so our intermediates were O2 and N2. In this problem, uh, the first thing that they want to know is the molecularity for each step. So molecularity for an elementary step just tells us how many molecules are physically colliding in that particular elementary step. And so all I need to do is look at the reactants and see how many reactant molecules there are. In the case of the first step, there are two molecules, so that is a bimolecular reaction. In the second step, I have one, two, three. So when I have three molecules colliding, I call that a termolecular reaction. And finally, in the third step, I have two molecules again, so that's also bimolecular. We don't have any in this particular mechanism, but reaction mechanisms that have just a single molecule uh, in an elementary step, those elementary steps are called unimolecular. The second thing we want to do is write the rate law for each elementary step. So generally when I'm given an overall reaction, I can't write the rate law based on the overall chemical reaction. However, if I know that I, I'm talking about an elementary step, as we are when we're looking at reaction mechanisms, then the numbers of the reactants just determine the orders in the rate law. So the rate law for the first step is rate, and I'm going to call it rate 1 to differentiate it between the other two steps, is equal to K1 because the rate constants for each step will, will be different. And then this has two reactants, but they're both NO2. So my rate law will be rate is equal to K times NO2 squared. In the second step, the rate 2 will be equal to K2. In this case, it's second order with respect to CO, because, again, there are two COs, and it'll be first order with respect to oxygen. And then finally, the third elementary step is first order in both N2 and oxygen. All right, and then finally, we want to know what does uh, this mechanism predict to be the rate law for the overall reaction? 
Well, all I need to do here is find the rate determining step. So I use RDS to represent rate determining step. And so in this case, we're told that the first step is slow, the second two are fast. So that means that the first elementary step is the rate determining step. And once I know the rate determining step, its rate law determines the rate law for the overall reaction. So if that is the rate law for the rate determining step, then the rate law for the overall reaction is rate is K times NO2 squared. And the only thing we need to check when I determine the rate law from the rate determining step, I want to be sure that there aren't any intermediates in the rate law. And because NO2 is a reactant and not an intermediate, we're fine. If we found that there was an intermediate in the rate law, then we would probably need to apply the pre-equilibrium approximation. So if you're interested in a mechanism that looks like that, I do have another video uh, that includes an example of the pre-equilibrium approximation. So I would recommend taking a look at that alternate video. Uh, but in this case, no intermediates, so we're done. And let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so now we want to draw a sketch of the reaction energy diagram for this mechanism. So in a reaction energy diagram, this is where we plot the reaction progress. Versus the energy or enthalpy. And so I need to look at what the enthalpy for the reaction is. And so the delta H is negative. So I know that the reaction is exothermic. So the products are going to be lower in energy than the reactants. So the reactants will be higher in energy and the products will be low in energy. Now the other thing I need to look at uh, when I'm drawing a reaction energy diagram uh, involving a multi-step mechanism is however many elementary steps there are, and in this case we have three, there are going to be three activation energies or three energy barrier mountains that the reaction is going to have to climb. And the relative heights uh, we can determine from the fact that I know the first reaction is slow so it's going to have a higher activation energy than the second and third steps. And so uh, I want to show three activation energies. I don't know what the relative height of the second and third are. I just need to be sure that I draw them lower than the first one. And so that's uh, what we might be looking for in the reaction energy diagram for this reaction. The key point being is a three-step mechanism, so I should have three activation energies. It's exothermic, so the reactant should be higher in energy than the products. And because the first step is rate determining, it should have a higher activation energy than either the second or the third steps. All right, so our last two questions uh, were asked is the mechanism is consistent with the experimental results. And so to answer that question, I need to, it has two parts. I want to know, do the elementary steps add up to give the correct overall reaction? And we showed earlier that that was in fact the case. So uh, in that sense, condition A is met. And we want to know if the reaction mechanism is consistent with the observed rate law. And we showed that on a previous slide. So that's good. All right. Now, the only other thing uh, we want to mention about this mechanism is uh, we're asked is there anything that would lead us to question the validity of this mechanism? And so uh, you may have picked up on the fact earlier that the second step is a termolecular reaction. And so uh, this makes me question the validity of this mechanism, the, being that termolecular elementary steps are extremely rare because what has to happen is all three of the molecules have to collide at the same time in exactly the right orientation. And so uh, the fact that this mechanism includes a term molecular step and the fact that they tell us that that's faster than a bimolecular elementary step leads me to question the validity of this mechanism. So yeah, so we would say hmm, the mechanism does uh, is consistent with the experimental results. However, the fact that it has a termolecular step 
leads me to question its validity. And that's all we have uh, on this example of reaction mechanisms.